Hi, welcome to Spirits Freedom Farm. Today we're going to talk about where we buy our seeds for the garden and how we organize them. Hi, today we're going to talk about our seeds and where we get them from and how we organize them and store them. Um, we are starting over from scratch this year with our seeds. Last year our seed box um, and cleaning up the garden one day. <laughs> we also have dogs and cats out with us here by the garden. <laughs> Last year somebody, and when we were cleaning up the garden one day after planting um, some of our fall crops, our seeds ended up in the hot shed and were in there for several days in baking heat and seeds don't germinate if they've been cooked so make sure you don't cook your seeds that's one tip uh, for seeds but I want to show you I want to show you what uh, what we've got okay we store our seeds in just a cheap uh, plastic shoe box it's perfect it's the perfect size for seed packets um, all the regular seed packets fit in there just right. Um, last year, believe it or not, this was packed full. I uh, I reduced our the number of varieties by about 40 this year. I cut out about 40 varieties, so this was this was full. But I still have almost 70 varieties of things. It's really hard to choose, pick and choose which things to grow. But then I sort. Um, the seeds by family type or how they're grown, things that are grown together or planted at about the same time. So I've got herbs and um, peppers and tomatoes are usually started around the same time pretty close. So I have all of those together and they're in the same family. Peas are started early. I've got root crops here. So I want to go through, maybe I'll go through um, the peppers and tomatoes here. So two of the places um, that we got our seeds from this year are um, MI Gardener, which is a new place. We've not gotten them, gotten seeds from them uh, until this year. This is our first year. Every year before, we've gotten them from Baker Creek. They both have heirloom varieties, um, non-GMO, sustainably raised. Um, we're, we like to look for things that are grown organically, even if they're not certified organic, that are heirloom varieties. An heirloom variety means that you can save the seed, assuming it didn't get cross-pollinated with another variety. You can save those seeds and continue having the same thing over, over and over again year after year. Which brings up a wonder, wonderful thought on seeds and what God has done with seeds. Each of these seeds has a tiny little plant in it. And that when you germinate that seed, you have that plant and it grows more fruit for you. But this the fruit also has more seeds, and each of those seeds has another plant which can grow more food and more seeds, and it's just never ending. It's just, it's kind of awesome to think about God's provision just in a little seed. But anyhow, uh, M.I. Gardener and Baker Creek, two of our favorites, or th this has been our favorite. This one we're expecting to be a favorite. Now, the difference is Baker Creek has a greater number of varieties of. Uh, seed choices than M.I. Gardener, at least at this point. But I did go with M.I. Gardener for as many as I could, what they had in stock of the varieties that I wanted to buy. I started with them. Their seeds, they're selling for 99 cents a packet, which is a really good price. Uh, Baker Creek, theirs run, I want to say, two and a half or 275 but on the low end, up to four something per packet, depending on what you're purchasing. But um, again, we've not had much trouble with any of their seeds. In fact, Baker Creek will, if you buy one packet of seeds, they will give you another packet for free. And then after so many more packets, they give you another free packet. So in all, I think I ended up with four or five free packets of seeds from them this year. Uh, and it, they also have free shipping. So if you're only going to buy a couple of packets, you know, just a few, Baker Creek might be cheaper. Um, there is shipping, but it's by no means exorbitant at MI Gardener. But they do they do charge shipping, so you may want to compare. Um, again, I ordered what I could. I ordered what I could from MI Gardener, um, and then I was impatient and, and got everything else that I could from, from Baker Creek. 
For our uh, seed potatoes this year, we went directly with Wood Prairie Farm, Fa Wood Prairie Family Farm, I think it is, and we are getting four varieties this year instead of three. And for our sweet potato slips, we're ordering them directly from Southern Exposure Seed Exchange. And we're ordering half as many slips because only half of them survived <laughs> through through um, to to grow anything. But it was more than enough. We ended up with 80 pounds of sweet potatoes with those. So it'll be plenty for us, I'm sure. And we don't have those yet because usually with live plants like that, the companies will wait until it's closer closer to the time to plant before they send those out to you. So that's what I have and usually if you just missed it we had a cat in our seed box that happens every time I bring my seeds out to the garden to plant. Um, I end up with the cat in the box <laughs> squishing them around so uh, watch out for that as well. I'll go through very quickly hopefully very quickly I don't want to keep you guys too long uh, with the just the different varieties that we're growing this year, what's new and what's not new for us. So for peppers and tomatoes, I think they're mostly ones that I have grown um, in the past. We've got cayenne, uh, Jimmy Nardella, which is a sweet frying pepper, even though it looks like a hot pepper, a sweet banana, pep sweet banana pepper, so I like to pickle those. We've got a brandy wine pink tomato, that's a big slicing tomato, and then Cherokee purple. Um, we like those. We've only got two two varieties of slicing tomato. Uh, gold nugget uh, cherry tomato. This is one of the parents of sun golds. If you like sun gold, uh, you might like these. Um, the description is wonderful. We've grown sun gold, but the because it's a hybrid, the genetics are not as stable. And then Chadwick cherry tomato. We grew these last year, and they they were very productive. We we had a lot of cherry tomatoes. In fact, we still have some frozen in the freezer. Uh, that we, we saved. Uh, Aunt Molly's ground cherries, again, we love ground cherries. Uh, we made some jam and some other things with those and some chutney, it's really good. Um, also, sugar rush peach, our hot peppers, this is another hot pepper, very delicious, and our hot peppers did great last year, both of those. Then I've got this, this is a new one, a new bell pepper called um, Quadrato d'Asti Rosso, so just a red bell pepper. Um, and then Chocolate Beauty, another sweet bell pepper, just like a dark purplish brown color. And then I have an Amish paste tomato and a San Marzano. We grew both of those last year. The San Marzano did really well. The Amish paste did okay. But I really would like um, to be able to supply our family's uh, tomato sauce <laughs> needs. We use a lot of tomato sauce and I'd like to, to do all that. Then I'm doing the um, Principe Boogies again. This is the tomato. It's a small small tomato, like a cherry tomato size, but more the um, consistency of a, of a paste tomato, so it's drier, and um, so it's perfect for drying uh, tomatoes, and that's what I use to, to dry tomatoes. And then I have a, a free one here, yellow pear, and we've grown these before. They're very delicious, too. So. Um, and that makes it hard, doesn't it, when they send you free seeds and you're trying to cut back on all your varieties <laughs> and then you get, get free seeds. But they usually end up being something that does very well in our garden. So I appreciate that. Um, we've got two kinds of peas here. We've just got a sugar snap and then we've got a garden pea, which I don't even remember which variety I ended up on. Wando. We'll see. I don't know. We'll give it a try. That one's new for us. We haven't grown that one before, the Wando. We'll see how that does. And then for squash and melons, we've got um, a yellow scallop squash. This is a different variety than the one that we've grown the last few years, uh, but it's got better ratings, so I'm hoping for a little bit more success. The other ones did fine, but it'll be nice to have even more. Uh, then muncher cucumber. Last year we grew a tender green burpless uh, cucumber. It was very good, um, but that wasn't available this year at either place. But muncher sound very similar, and it looks similar, so I'm hoping for for something good there. And then for a zucchini-style squash, we have a Costa Romanesco, which we've grown, also very delicious. And then last year I grew, for pickling cucumbers, I grew Parisian and Boston. I did those the last couple of years, and they did okay. They weren't terrible in terms of... Um, productivity, but I'm hoping that the Chicago pickling will be even better. It's got a little bit better review, so I'd like to make a lot more pickles. Then red curry squash we grew last year, did very well. We love it, so we're growing that again. Same with the winter luxury pie pumpkin. I'm going to keep up with that. 
And then I have here a, a Canada Crookneck squash, which is like a, a butternut style squash. But we grew last year, we grew the Pennsylvania Dutch Crookneck squash. Um, again, that was one that was not available this year. So we're trying the Canada Crookneck. Um, the uh, the um, Pennsylvania Dutch did really well. We had a lot of squash off of this plant, so we were very happy with that. Blacktail Mountain Watermelon did okay. It was a very dry summer, and that's probably part of our issues with it, but it did okay. But uh, we'd, like, we'd like to have more <laughs> watermelon, so we're trying this one again this year. Then also Sweet Passion. We tried that one last year as well, and we got a few melons off of that. And then this one had very good ratings for um, productivity as well as flavor. So this one's a Petit Cri de Rennes. So uh, another like cantaloupe style melon. So we're looking forward to that as well. I don't know, what else are you guys interested in? Our root crops, we've got we've got a bro same broccoli. We've got one green cabbage instead of three this year. One red cabbage, a different variety. We're growing um, the Chinese um, Hilton cabbage that we grew the last couple of years. It did really well, um, and we like it. There are a lot of it's got a lot of uses, so we appreciate that one. We're going to try for cauliflower. We still haven't actually gotten any yet, <laughs> but we'll keep trying. So uh, the red cabbage is a mammoth red rock, and then the green is Copenhagen Market. So we'll see how they do, and uh, then the broccoli is a Waltham 29. We'll see. I. A lot of it is play. That's what's fun about the gardens. You can just try new things. Um, you can read and read, and you can learn from people's mistakes. That's important, and learn from their successes as well. But you're going to learn more by just getting in there and doing it and seeing what really works for you. So, But we've got uh, a different turnip variety, but only one, Golden Ball, this year. Then for beets last year, we grew three varieties, uh, Golden uh, uh, Chiogia and uh, Red Beet early wonder I think. This year we're gr growing a Detroit dark red and a Solyndra which is also another red beet just a different shape. We love the red beets the best so we thought we'd try a different, couple different varieties and what's nice is if you have something you like doing multiple varieties or like doing an Amish paste in a San Marzano or two different red beets if it's something you really like if one doesn't do well and the other one does you you at least have something for your work uh, and that's another reason to grow so many different things too. If something, if for some reason it's just not a good year for tomatoes, but uh, carrots do really well. You've got food, and that's and that's wonderful. So, okay, uh, doing French breakfast radishes again. We love it. Easter ba basket radish, which is just a wide variety of radish seeds mixed together, lots of different colors. We've got onion yellow of Parma. Another thing that's great about Baker Creek is if they know the germination is low, they'll either send you an extra packet or they'll, they'll overpack the, the envelope um, to help make up for that, uh, that low germination rate. So, so we've got a yellow onion, the um, Hishiko Bunching Onion, which is a non-bulbing non onion, which we grew that last year as well, and then a Southport Red Globe Onion. So onions are a little tricky. We're starting those now inside. Um, those are the only ones of the root crops that we are starting indoors. Uh, all the other root crops should be started in place. The same with um, the squashes. The squashes, melons, and cucumbers, all the cucurbits, uh, should be started outdoors. They don't like to be moved. Uh, what else do we have here? The um, peas, again, vining, should be started outdoors. Peppers and tomatoes, because of how long the season is, you should start those indoors as well. Um, onions are indoors for because they do have a very long season as well. So that's that's why we want to start those indoors. Uh, another thing with onions, if you are starting from an onion set instead of a, a seed, you are more likely to have it bolt. It means it's going to go to flower and go to seed, and that's where the energy is going to go instead of the bulb because an onion's going to make a flower its second year. If you're buying a set, you're buying that first year plant at root. Um, so think about that. If you are going to buy sets instead of seeds, buy smaller ones. Um, smaller sets are going to give you more success. So, all right, what else? Cabbages, we start those indoors again, longer season. And, um, and, and really, it's not even so much the season, but they do well when it's cooler and are 
temperatures here go to hot pretty quickly. So we start them indoors. And they can tolerate the cold weather. So we do that. Same with greens. We start the greens with lettuce. We've got a couple kinds of lettuce this year instead of six. We've got some parsley and celery, which we did okay with last year. We've got a different variety. Um, freckles, romaine, lettuce, and a little gem butterhead. We grew that last year and it did well. Uh, the same kale we always grow, uh, blue curled scotch kale, and the same spinach we always grow, Bloomsdale long standing. They taste very good and they work very well. And the same with the Swiss chard, we always grow the rainbow chard. It looks really pretty. You can put it, cut a few leaves and put it, it's our other dog. <laughs> You can cut a few leaves and put them in a vase, and they just look really pretty because they're so colorful. But they're delicious and nutritious. So those we also start directly in the garden, in the cool weather. Okay, this year we are growing uh, fewer beans as well. I took out all of the dry beans that, uh, that we were growing last year. I think we had six varieties of dry beans, um, including a couple of lima. Uh, I'm keeping this year, we're going to grow the Christmas pole lima beans again. Those did pretty well. I want to try to grow some more of those, get a few more meals out of those. Uh, and then for snap beans, uh, we're doing dragon tongue again this year, which is a pretty yellow pod with purple splashes. Tastes very good. And then landreth is a new one. We haven't grown that one before, a green snap bean. And then we also have a yellow bean, yellow wax bean called Bourg de Rochencourt. So we like yellow wax beans. They're good, tender, very delicious, and easy to harvest because they're yellow. Same with the purple beans. Last year we tried purple dove uh, snap beans and they did okay, but these have a little bit better rating. So we're going to try this one as purple teepee. Again, a nice pretty purple color should help make it a little easier to find when we harvest. So and we've got herbs and a few flowers that are um, new for us this year. And then we have fewer carrots. I'll just show you those real quick. We're growing a different um, variety of uh, parsnip this year. We're growing Harris Model, which we did Hollow Crown last, last year. Uh, we're growing Danvers carrots again, um, and also Cosmic Purple. Uh, we like those Kyoto Red, which is a fall carrot, so we're going to try that one. And then, oh, I think one of our free packets was Cosmic Purple. They do really well here. Um, and then also the Amarillo. We did, they did pretty well last year. So, and then we pulled out a few of the smaller, more fun varieties. We had some small carrots and extra large carrots, but we just thought, just do some regular shaped carrots this year and see how much we can produce of our own food. So I think that covers most of it. Like I said, we've got some herbs. Um, the herbs that you would start outdoors are cilantro and dill. They don't like to be moved, but most of your other herbs and things you can start um, indoors they'll have a little bit longer season so um, I think I think that covers it if you have any questions about what we grow or how we store it uh, let me know and here in just a second we'll give you a sneak peek we're going to be building some raised beds hopefully over the course of the next uh, few years we'll have the entire garden in raised beds we've been planting directly in the ground up to this point uh, we have so much clay here and so many weeds that we decided to go ahead and, and build some raised beds. So we're going to give you a sneak peek at what those are looking like at the moment. Thank you so much. Please visit the blog post linked in the video description below for more information about this video and the supplies used.